Hello, welcome back to the channel. And um, today I'm going to talk to you about grid level energy storage in the form of molten salt storage. And this came about is because I saw an article uh, on Energy Storage News with the title Molten Hydroxide Salt Energy Storage Inaugurated in Denmark. And in this article, um, they talk about a company called Heim Energy and Heim Energy um, have claimed that they have built the first uh, molten so uh, salt storage, um, MOSS, this is the project, M-O-S-S, -S, located in Eisenberg in Denmark and this is the first megawatt scaled thermal energy storage unit based on molten hydroxide salt technology. So that's what this video is going to be about. It's going to be explaining what molten salt energy storage is and what's so important about it in the case of uh, high energy. So before I go on, please make sure you hit the subscribe button if you like this video. It really does help support the channel and get my viewership up. Okay, so let's talk about energy storage. So, most people are familiar with the idea of batteries because we are now having them in our homes, we have them in our cars, EVs also have them um, as their main energy storage um, medium to provide um, the electricity um, to their vehicles. And also the grid, or the national grid, where the electricity providers are uh, also interested in energy storage and you may have seen things like old Tesla, old Nissan Leaf and old Zoe batteries being used to create large storage for electricity. And the reason why storage is important is because as we move towards uh, green tech, things like solar panels and uh, wind turbines and even hydro, the energy produced by that are dependent on the climate and the weather, and therefore isn't consistent. And therefore at times we have an excess of energy generation, and sometimes we have a low of energy generation, which may not meet the demands of the grid at that time. Therefore to even out the grid, providers such as the National Grid are going to be looking at ways of storing that energy. At the moment, things like gas-powered pipes, fire stations and pole cutting, Coal, <coughs> sorry, coal, coal fired stations um, can be started up to cover any uh, excess or cover any um, shortage needed, but this costs money and there's always a delay to it. So, storage is a good idea. So, as I say, we're all familiar with the idea of a chemical battery um, where the electricity is converted from a chemical reaction. Um, in the case of lithium ion phosphate um, in terms of that interacting with an electrolyte um, and separating through a medium. But there are other ways to store electricity which might be more efficient on a grid scale. So this is where molten salt batteries come in. And the idea of a molten salt battery is that you store your excess energy in a salt which has been made molten, so you store it at high temperature. So the idea is that you can store your salt at this higher temperature and then when you need to generate electricity you let that uh, salt flow through a heat exchanger um, and on the other side of the heat exchanger there is water which turns into steam and then turns a steam turbine. And the, and the good thing about these uh, salt or molten salt storage system is that they can store energy for about a week and they can release the energy reasonably quickly. So it's not like a lithium ion battery where you can store the electricity and then potentially keep it for months um, minus a bit of vampire loss. It's perfect so it's not great for the house but it's great and it also takes up a lot of space but it is great for if you have a big wind farm, a big solar farm, or even if you just have a conventional power plant. So let's have a look at what uh, 
Heme Energy have uh, been saying. So they have put up a video on their YouTube channel which shows sort of a diagram of what's going on. So I'll overlay part of it in this. So they have gone through the, they're going through like a testing phase of this system. So it is not fully up and, up, uh, up and running yet. But what they have done is they've taken an hydroxide salt. So I wasn't familiar with the term hydroxide salt. I thought hydroxides were soluble bases which make them alkalize, which um, I always thought that a salt was a neutral material that was made by mixing an acid and a base. But depending on what chemist you talk to, you can also get hydroxide salts, which are actually uh, bases and alkalis. So it doesn't really matter what you call them. Um, and what they claim is that this allows your them to be able to store the salt at a slightly lower temperature because there are molten salt technologies being used around the world. So a quick search on Wikipedia, I know the most not the most accurate, but you can cross set references with other ideas. There is in um Chile um there is a setup called the uh I'm gonna butcher this, my Spanish is terrible, the Shiro Dom Dominidro solar thermal plant and this has a huge tower associated to it um, and it reflects the light back off it um, onto solar collectors and then the molten salt runs through these solar collectors and stores the heat and they have enough storage there to allow electricity generation for up to 17.5 um, hours. There are also some other installations around the world, um, so, um, such as the uh, Gemma Solar, um, Firma Solar, Solar Solar Power Tower in Spain, uh, which came along in 2013. So the idea of a molten salt battery or energy storage is not new. Um, it's been around for the past decade or so, it'll be utilised for the last decade. Um, but normally in these types of systems, they're using things like potassium and sodium nitrite at their salt, and therefore the salt has to be pumped up to a temperature of about 500 degrees in the hot storage facility. Um, what I'm claiming is that they can use they use a salt which I don't actually specify in any literature I found, uh, which is about um, has a melting point of uh, three hundred and fifty. So that could potentially be caustic soda, or sodium hydroxide, which has a melting point of about three hundred and twenty-five, or it could be magnesium hydroxide, which has a melting point of about three hundred and fifty. So this is, so if we just look at their video, what you can see is they have a cold st uh, storage tank and then when there's excess energy, the molten salt in there gets pumped through their uh, heat exchange and gets heated up to a higher temperature and stored in the hot tank. And then when they need to release that energy, that molten salt flows through this heat exchanger that I've already said, generates steam and turns their uh, steam turbine. It's also ha this um, system also allows them to use, uh, to generate electricity and actually store at the same time. So if they're collecting from a, so um, a solar panel, which is a heat collector rather than a PV generator, uh, they can be converting that energy in real time to electricity energy. So this um, insulation that they have uh, is being built in Denmark, as I've said, and is, let's uh, see where it's actually going in. So it's being used at the Semco uh, Maritime facilities in Eisenberg, which um, since 2002 has 23 offshore um, wind turbines um, so I think it's a wind turbine plant that they've put this in for testing at and as I say it's been going through a commissioning stage and has recently been test, uh, turned on uh, for 
commissioning and testing to see how efficient and if it works in real life. So this could be the future of just general uh, energy storage. So everywhere where you might see a wind farm or a solar farm, you might see one of these facilities next to it. It's obviously not very good, just due to the pure size, we probably won't be fitting these to homes, but um, it is something to watch out for in the future. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope that explains a little bit about a different types of um, energy storage. Um, as part of this series of explaining the science of green technology, I will be looking at other methods that could be utilised for energy storage, including longer term energy storage.